One of the biggest problems of holding a dichotomous worldview is that inevitably it tends to lead to dilemmas. And dilemmas are situations in which you find yourself stuck between a rock and a hard place with no way out. Let me illustrate that with a very simple example about certain very strict interpretations of Christianity, in which a person is either good or bad, they either accept Jesus as their savior or they don't, and if they do accept Jesus as their savior, then even though they are born lost, they have a chance of being saved, and if not, they don't. Of course, that is the other dichotomy in this particular strict interpretation of Christianity, that either you will be saved or you won't, and another simple dichotomy that is often embraced by many Christians is that life begins at conceptions before conception conception before conception you are not a human then the egg and the sperm come together and bingo there's a human being right from the start that's another dichotomous outlook on life and the big dilemma that the combination of these three points of view leads to is the fact that the reality of life then according to that worldview is completely and utterly unfair. Now if a God, a supposedly good and loving God, is going to give his flawed creation the chance of redemption, then surely the fair thing to do would be to give every individual that is created according to this plan an equal chance of achieving salvation. There's one problem though. It is impossible to give somebody an equal chance of salvation. If some of us live to the ripe age of a hundred or even older, and others of us, if life begins at conception, don't even make it to being born. And therein lies the rub. How are you going to deal with these stillbirths, with these infant deaths and so on and so forth? Yes, of course, it might be very tempting as a Christian to go all pious on them and as a, you know, consolation tell these poor people who are confronted with having to deal with this that their little dead child is now a little angel in heaven, but that is patently unfair because these individuals who, according to your own doctrine, are supposedly human from the outset, from the moment the egg meets the sperm, never had to make this decision, did they? They never had to make this choice to accept Jesus as their savior, and yet they're saved, according to your pious assertion, your little consoling words to this bereaved parent. These children are saved without ever having to make this choice. Of course, conversely, you could go all Calvinistic on us, or you know, this really strict Christian interpretation and say that, well, since they never accepted Jesus as their Savior, they clearly aren't saved. How is that fair? And so you find yourself in a dilemma. You find yourself in a situation where it is clear, without any equivocation, without any way of finding a way out of this situation, that the situation that's presented by reality is clearly, in the context of your deranged mythology, totally unfair, with no possibility of resolving this conflict. This is a dilemma, one that's created by your worldview and that you must present, if you want to be taken seriously by anybody, you must present an answer to. And let me give you a hint. God's ways are mysterious is not an answer.